evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to It Is Real. My name is Bill McFerrin. And I'm Ron Bagwell. The subject of tonight's show is the haunting of Colonel Isaac Eby. It started one dark night on August 11, 1857. That's right, Ron. The Haida Indians came to Whidbey Island searching for ca a captain who had done them wrong. Uh, the captain was not home. So they settled for the next closest neighbor, who happened to be a Colonel Isaac Eby. Well, you talk about bad luck, Bill. Um, imagine uh, they not only did they shoot him, they scalped him, they chopped his head off, and then for two weeks they carried his head around the island on a stick. It really terrified the town folk, and his body remained unburied for a while in an effort to get his head returned to it. Unable to locate the head, the body was buried two weeks later. It is our belief, due to the headless burial, that a grisly haunting continues to this day in and around that house up on Woodby Island. And rumor has it that the head is buried somewhere on Smith Island, which is an island a little bit to the north and west of Woodby Island. In our research, uh, we have uncovered an account of two paranormal researchers who spent one hellish night in the house. The story you are about to hear is based on true events that they experienced that night. Uh, Don, would you go ahead and roll the story for the folks out there? I think they'll enjoy this. Two seconds. Two seconds, okay. We have a little technical difficulty here, but in a few minutes we'll flash the uh, telephone number on the screen for the you callers at home can give us a call and give us your opinion on what you're about to, to hear. We have a lot more to come up tonight, including some film clips that, that you're going to find truly amazing. Um, Colonel Isaac Eby was, a, was, was quite a, a famous man on Whidbey Island. He lived some time ago, uh, but he was well known on the island. He was a great landowner. Here comes that film clip, Don, if you could roll it. Thanks. I don't know what time it was when I awoke. It was really dark. I heard the floorboards creaking. I think James was moving about. I heard him working with the matches and his white gas lantern. What's going on? Did you hear something? In the next moment, the lantern's mantle just exploded. And I heard a creaking door opening somewhere else in the house. You hear that? I climbed out of my sleeping bag and put on my jacket. James, I think it's showtime. We crept into the hallway. James led the way, carrying the hissing lantern. We gazed down from the stairs on the lock. James turned off his lantern for the whole main floor was shining with a blue light. We saw a figure moving, carrying a musket. It's Isaac. The floor under James' feet began to vibrate because he was shaking. Don't have a heart attack on me. It's the ghost. The spirit was a dark, man-shaped shadow in the blue light as he moved towards the door. Slowly, it opened and he went out. From our view, we couldn't see outside, so I pushed James to make him go nearer. He went halfway down the stairs. The hide are out there. Out in the night, a blue light eliminated only itself. Nothing was visible in that light. But outside, its circle were Indians dressed for battle, armed with long knives. One of them wore a mask. His silhouette of his head sported a long, bird-like beak. Isaac Eby stood with his back to us, holding his musket. We couldn't hear him, though he seemed to be speaking. The Haida were in no mood to listen, and they fanned out around him. 
He aimed at one of them, but as his musket fired, it didn't sound right. We heard it like a distant explosion in a tunnel. A hatchet struck the weapon and caused him to miss. The next instant, the Haida were upon him. They held him, stretching him by his arms. The man with the bird mask raised the long knife. With one swipe, Colonel Eby was beheaded. As his head fell to the ground, the light went out, and the Haida and the Colonel were gone. That was, a, that was a scary story. It's a, a story of two people that spent the night in the, uh, the haunted house and uh, described the, the paranormal experiences that they uh, uh, witnessed. Um, our lines are wide open. We've got uh, a line open right now. Please give us a call and, and ask us some questions. Bill, I believe we do have a call. Oh, we have one already. Okay. Hey. Go ahead, okay. caller. What's the question? Hey, caller. Well, uh, I was just wondering about... Um, you know how there was that Sasquatch? Yeah. Yeah. This uh, that was our, our last episode. Could you would you have a question for us by any chance about tonight's episode? Um. Yeah. Um. So that house is supposed to be haunted. Oh, it is. Yeah. It definitely has some strange things going on uh, inside the house. Have you ever uh, been up to that area? Uh, yeah, a couple times. <laughs> have you seen Have you seen the house? Um. No. Well, I have if a you uh, house right next to me. Yeah, if you if you'd like to, there'll be a number at the end of the show, caller. You can call up and, a and we'll answer that some. Like to fuck me every day. And hey, okay, we'll see you later. Fly. Thanks for the call. Thanks for that call. Okay. And yeah, we actually went went up there and did some research, we'll, which we'll get to later. Um, but um, cool we'd like to kind of stick on the subject. The other caller wanted to go back to our previous show, which is about Sasquatches. That's true, and we don't have any problem with that. Um, if somebody would like to ask us some questions, as as far as uh, any last episodes, they could call it the number at the end of the show, and we'd be happy to answer them for us. Right, we have a voicemail. Um, you, might, you might ask yourself, uh, what kind of man was Isaac Neff Eby? Well, um, we know he was mentioned as Colonel Eby as early as 1853, but served as a captain in the Indian War of 1856 and 1857. What kind of uh, middle name is Neff? I have no idea what, what kind of name Neff was. I, I believe that uh, he might have had a cleft palate when he was a kid, and his name was, was really Jeff, but it came out Neff like that. So I think, think that's how he got the name. I think we have another caller. Okay, go ahead, caller. Am I on? Hey, what's your name, and where are you calling from? Oh, my name's John from West Seattle. John, okay. Um, you think you could, like, uh, what, what happened now? I, I wasn't watching all the way through. Yeah, uh, we're, we're doing a story on actually. The ghost of, like, Lee, what was his name? Miss could you speak up, caller, just a little? Hello? Yeah, that's good. Can you hear that's me? Better. Yeah. Yeah, oh, um, what was the ghost's name again? Well, it's a, the Colonel Eby is the man who, it's actually based on a true story here. This guy actually lived up on Whidbey Island in the uh, 1850s and uh, was beheaded by the Indians. The they Indians? Took his head. Uh, the Haida Indians from up north. This, yeah. is a, this, is a, this is a live show, so we're going to get calls like that. Um, yeah, people just want to try to get on the air. Kind yeah. of a sad commentary, but we can just ignore them because they, they're not showing very much intelligence, if any at all. Okay. Um, well, let's keep taking some more calls. We need some good questions. Bill, how do you think? How do you think he got the title of Colonel? Was he a true well, Colonel? I think it was. It was more of an affectionate title bestowed on him by friends, uh, kind of like Colonel Harlan Sanders with the Kentucky Fried Chicken. Where he he wasn't really a Colonel. I, I hate to break that to you. Colonel Sanders was not a Colonel. No. Well, well, that kind of ruins my evening, but. I think we have another caller here, do we? Oh, we don't no, have we a don't caller. Have okay. Caller. Lines are open. Hey, if, you got, if you ever want to call us, now's your chance. Lines are open. Test us. Call us and test us. Ask us any question you have. Just kind of yeah. keep it uh, non-racist and uh, as clean as you can keep it. Uh, yeah, and some decent questions. In, uh, we do know that Colonel Eby, in 1850, claimed 640 acres on a prairie that still bears his name. Nice chunk of land up there. In 1851, his uh, wife, two sons, her three brothers, and the Crockett family came overland from the east to the Puget Sound country. I wonder if there's any relation to Davy Crockett, that family. Uh, I don't know. Crockett was a fairly common name in those days. I think it was. Oh, we have another caller. Caller, go ahead. Let's hear, uh, tell us your name and, and where you, whereabouts you're calling from. Hello? Hi there. White fucking tower! Whoa! Well, we got some real we've, got some, uh, we've got some Aryans listening Aryan to our Nation. show tonight, so Get off our lines, just please. please ignore those calls. We need, some, we need some good, decent callers out there if you have some questions. I'm sure uh, there must be some other people watching. Yeah, uh, try to keep those uh, nimrods away from us here. Anyway, uh, uh, he came overland east of the Puget Sound country and settled up on Whidbey Island, where it's, it's now uh, Evie's landing, that area of near Coopville on Whidbey Island. How you doing? Hey, what can I push 
Okay, Bill. Uh, was was anything known about Evie? What kind of man he was, Bill? Well, he was like like most people, very sociable man. Uh, chewed tobacco, drank whiskey. Um, so, well, he did die at a very early age. He was only 39 years old when uh, the Indians chopped his head off. 39, 39 years old. But I understand that uh -huh. he lived. Uh -huh. in, he lived quite a full. Um, he lived quite a full life up to the age of 39. It, it, it had kind of a terrible ending to it, but um, he did. He did. It did end there. And we're going to tell you more about the story of how we actually met his untimely ending with the Indians. It's it's quite an ironic story, and it, it, it teaches you. Uh, in my opinion, he should have had a peephole in his door, so he could have looked through it first to see who was standing out there waiting for him with hatchets and everything. Uh, the um, interesting thing, this is all. This all really happened. This is all documented in the history books. Yeah, we've done we've done a lot of research on this, and uh, what we decided to do, and uh, we took it upon ourselves to visit the site with our sensitive research equipment. We'll get to that later, though. We have a phone call now. Yeah, we have a call. Okay. okay caller, call. you're on the air. Could you tell us your name? Hello. Yes, hi, caller. Could you tell us your name? Um, Abdul Rahim. Abdul. Hi. Uh, do you have a question for us? Um. Yes. Uh. What's the, the the ghost name? Uh, we we believe that the entity that is that is running is haunting the house right now is the ghost of Colonel Isaac Neff Eby, who uh, died in the house in 1857. And uh, he was an actual colonel in the. Well, he wa he wasn't an actual colonel. He was actually a captain in the Indian War. And he's a volunteer army. Colonel captain. Colonel was a kind of an, a name that was just bestowed upon him oh, by like some nickname. by some friends, kind of like a nickname. Probably a nickname. Oh, okay. Any more questions? Um, How'd you like no. that story? Um, that, that was a really good story. Yeah, that was actually two people who spent the night in the house. Yeah, um, how do you guys get your stories, do you? We uh, do a lot of research. We're giving, we're giving tips. Uh, this this, call, this uh, story actually came from one of the viewers of our show here. They and called up on, on our, on our uh, direct line, uh, which we're going to give after the show. It's a message line, actually. We have a voicemail. Leave us it's a voicemail. It's a voicemail. And they told us of this story, and uh, we did the research and, and came up with the rest. We really appreciate viewer input. We, it's, it's, it's the crux of our show. Yeah, like um, they, they do. Who does the camera work and acting and things like this? Well, we kind of all take turns doing it. Yeah, we, our cameraman is Don Morley. He's, a, he's about the best cameraman you can find around here. Yeah, it looks very uh, professional. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a okay. lot. Now, the second half of our show will deal with the, the research that we, we did when we went up to the, uh, to the island and actually spent the several nights up on the island right outside the house. And we're going to get to that, so um, stay tuned. We want to take a few more calls, though, before we get to the, the second part of our show. So. What, I, what I can say here real quick, Bill, is that Thanks. when we did go up to the house for the two weeks, we need to let our audience know that, yeah. that we went up there with very sensitive equipment, including cameras, motion detectors, and everything you can oh, think we of. we have state of the art, that's for sure. We stayed there for two days and, and, and approximately two nights. One of the nights was, was one of the strangest nights that we've ever experienced in our life. Oh, and uh, we're going to show you some stuff coming up in a few minutes on that. Can so I, I, I believe we have a caller. Do we want to put a caller on the line now? No, we don't. I'd like to take one more call before we get to yeah. the second part of our show. Yeah. Now we're ready. We'll take a call right now if it's possible. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, okay. Caller, I think you're on the air. Yeah. Hi, Caller. Hi, I'm Craig from Des Moines. Hi, Craig. What's yeah. Your, what's your question? Um, uh, basically, the question I have is, uh, my thought is, uh, could it be ghosts or could it be a uh, part of the spirit world? Could well, it be spirits that are masquerading in the sky? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. You know, I really don't have an answer for that. All we know is that we, uh, based upon the legend that we heard about around the house, and then we went to investigate it, we detected that something actually is happening there. Happening there uh, could be happening there too. A lot of things happening around where murders were uh, have taken place. Have you have you guys been there? Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. And have you stayed there? Yes. Oh yeah. Have you seen the phenomena? Or? Um, yes, we saw some things that uh, we cannot explain, and we're going to show. We we've, we've actually got some of that on film. It's going to be upcoming in just a few minutes. And uh, but we can't answer the question whether or not it's spirits masquerading as ghosts or not. We just know that it's something that you normally don't see every day in everyday life. Well, let me just add. I think, from my perspective, from a Christian perspective, I think a lot of, a lot of times it's uh, demonic spirits. But you know, it could be that. But that's my viewpoint. Could be, yeah. but it's still it's still pretty incredible to actually capture them on film. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll thanks. have some of that too for you. Thanks for your call, Craig. Thanks a lot. Okay. So now. Um, Don, if possible, we'd like to roll the film clip that we, some of the film clip that we rolled, uh, that we experienced when we spent that night in the house, and uh, stay tuned for some, for some pretty scary we'll sights some here. more calls here. And we have another experience to relate to you later, too. Okay, Don, roll it.
Okay. Fine. Uh, you know, it, it kind of looked like a face in that, in that film footage we captured. Yeah, we're going to show that again because we might have had a, a, a little technical difficulty on that clip. I'm not quite sure. Did it if, come through? I'm not quite sure if it came through. Did it come through? The contrast looked low. Contra okay. we're gonna, what we're going to do is if we have another call coming in here, we'll take it. Mm -hmm. well, Other, otherwise, uh, I think we're going to redo this clip and show it again. Uh, There's something on that film. We, we captured it. We weren't actually there. We were asleep when this happened. And we went back over the film and detected some phenomena here. We're trying to show it. Yeah, we viewed this uh, outside of the studio here, and we definitely saw something that I think you will agree looks it resembles a face of some kind. Uh, we, we didn't actually think that we had experienced anything at the time, but here we've Are got it queued again? up again. Let's, let's go again. ahead and roll it again, Don. I might try to freeze frame it, too. Okay. Okay, I think I think we, we saw it a little there. better that time. Um, uh, we weren't actually aware that at the time we had actually caught anything on the film. We left rather disappointed, except except for the fact that uh, while we were there and we were camping at the house, we heard what appeared to be footsteps walking around in the house almost constantly all night long. First, we thought it was uh, some of our our crew, you know, walking around I'm doing joking with a, us. A, adjusting the equipment and everything, yeah. and, or maybe joking with us, which they really don't do. So we knew right immediately then that it wasn't them. So there were noises coming from the house, and it wasn't just the house settling. It was um, it was actual noises, so we couldn't identify it. But when we got home with the film, that's when we both discovered that there was something on there that we didn't know was there. And this particular camera was pointed towards a window of the house all night long, and uh, this is what came through. Uh, we, do we have some more colors? Do we have a caller? We do. Okay. Okay. Ooh, color. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Hi. Hi. Hi do you have a question? Um, yeah. Um, so, where's this at? It's up on, on Whidbey Island, just north of, what north of here. What was that face for? Pardon? Why'd you make that face? We didn't make the face. It it actually was was caught on film while we were no, we were kind of investigating. No, the guy in the made a face when I asked you guys where it was at. Oh, oh the, oh, the, the where the face was oh. at. We thought you meant where the entire the, yeah. where the house was. Yeah. Uh, the face was uh, in a window. It was in one of the side windows that were, was near what used to be the kitchen in the house. Oh. And yeah. it was nighttime, but the, there's the house right there. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, that's the actual house where it took place, and the, the window where we shot it from was from the one of the ends. That's where it reportedly most of the hauntings and most of the sightings has taken place. So we set our primary camera up in that location. I think that was, was a fish. Was it a good ghost or a bad ghost? Um, well, we, it didn't do anything to us. We weren't hurt by it. And I, I haven't really heard of any instances where it's been hurt, where it's hurt anyone. But, no. but what happens with this ghost is a very strange story. It, uh, it, it, it seems to reenact. It goes through the whole reenactment of the beheading of Colonel Isaac Eby. The ghost appears to be... Isaac Eby. It, it, it goes down the stairs, it meets the Indians, it it's in kind of a hazy blue light from what we understand, and it, it, the whole thing happens over again. The head gets chopped off, and then it just flashes and fades out. The whole scene is reenacted, so pe when people go stay the night there, that they, they get a whole uh, playback. It's like a, a video playback of what happened in 1857. We have to be honest, we didn't see the reenactment at all. Uh, we we didn't no. see the reenactment, but we did see that we did we discovered the face on our film. After we got back, we looked over the film. In in my grandma's house with my dad's mom, she moved into a new house. Uh -huh. Yes. And um and I guess whenever she walked into the hallway where you open the door, uh -huh. um she saw a ghost smoking a pipe under a tree, uh -huh. and she was really scared, and she was the only one who saw it. Huh. And then she had a priest come in. Really? And um, bless the house, and after that, she never saw it again. Well, so uh, you know that that does the trick sometimes. I, I've heard cases though where a, where a priest comes in and blesses the house, and it it gets even worse. Yeah. So it depends on I guess what kind of forces she's dealing with. Most most forces, from what I understand, are absolutely harmless. They're just they're they're there to be act observed and enjoyed, as far as I'm concerned. Hey, cool. thanks, caller. Thank you, caller, for the question. Uh, yeah, we better get moving on. We, we want to tell you about something else that happened. Yes. Um, oh. no, I think you should tell them. Yeah. About the well, also, during the night, and, and we don't know how related this is to uh, the ghost of, of Colonel Isaac Eby, but twice during the night we observed 
a brief but a blinding light which engulfed the entire area. This happened two times, lasted, I would say, just a fraction of a second. We, um, we didn't, we thought it was strange at the time. We, we, we did an investigation to see if it could have been lights from a car or an airplane, but there was nothing there. There was absolutely nothing around. But we have no explanation what it was to this day. Well, we all, we ended up with light sunburn yeah, after yeah. this, too. The next day, we did notice, though, that our faces and all our exposed skin areas were, were like a light sunburn on it, which disappeared after a day or two, but that's the only result of the light. It's almost like we've been on vacation in Hawaii for a week. Yeah. So, I think we might have some more callers coming in here. Yeah. And Lines are open, by the way, if you want to call in tonight. Also, Don, if, if possible, uh, do we have a phone call? I think we do. Okay, we'll take another phone call. Let's take another one. Hi, caller, you're on the air. What Hello? is your name? Oh, my name's Will. Hi, Will. Well, What's your yeah, question? Yeah, I, I was wondering if you guys have, have been in contact with anyone from sightings, because that's no, an uh, incredible tape. No, no, we haven't been in, cr in sighting. In, in you should sighting. call them, because they, they have a number that they put up there, and that's some phenomenal tape. Uh, we got it. You know, we, we're trying to get our own show started, so we're, we're not too eager to a share. A national show, some like, uh, Fox, uh, like on Fox or something? Oh, yeah. yeah, well, we're, we're, yeah, we're we really familiar with sightings, and... Uh, and uh, that's a good idea. We really appreciate that. Dog! We really appreciate that idea. Oh, it sounds like something happened to the caller. Yeah, I, I hope he's, he's okay. okay. Sounds like somebody might have stabbed him or something. I might have chopped his head off. Well, uh, see, goodness. when you're dealing in, in things like this with the spirit world, if you start giving out information like this too freely, you never oh. know what's going to come up behind you. You know, one thing we could do, I'm showing a picture oh, of the colonel, too. Good idea. I don't know if Don can hey, get Donald, a close-up could you give us a uh, close-up of the, a picture, one of the last pictures of Colonel Isaac Eby? This is, there he is right here. This is when he had his head. And he was, you can tell, you know, he was a, he looked like a typical man of the period. He was probably five foot eleven or so and a, a kind of a stocky man. Very famous man of the day. Yeah, he wasn't just a, he wasn't just a, a, a loner there on the island. He was a powerful man on the island. Very well, he practiced law. Donald, would it be possible for you to roll the film clip again of the, uh, what we think is a face and... Sure. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, he's going to, he's going to locate it now and he's going to... got a few minutes left here. I like an, uh, another thing I can add about this, this, uh, this trip up to the island. It was, uh, of all the houses and all the areas on the island that we went that day to gather research and to talk to people, this, this is the one area to me that, that stood out to be kind of a, it was kind of a real mystical, mythical place. It had a strange feeling to it. Do we have another phone call? Oh, no other phone no, call. lines are open. Okay, we're, we're going to roll the film clip again here, and we're going to let everybody see it again and give their opinion of what they're seeing. Now, tell us what you think of this. I think it's a definite face. Okay, but uh, I hope you've got a good, another chance to see that. Good look hope you had your VCRs running so you can look at it later. I think we have a call. Um, caller, you're on the air. What is your question? Uh, I want to know, you guys uh, located this house in Whidbey Island, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Where in Whidbey Island did this happen at? Yeah, it's, it's a pretty much common knowledge, so I don't, I don't you know, have any problem giving it out. There's a, it's in central Whidbey Island near the town of uh, Coopville. Right and it's uh, it's Cove. In, near Penn's Cove, and it's uh, it's on E.B. Landing. So it seems like everything around that area, or a lot of things, is named after Colonel Isaac E.B. And is this the first documentation you guys have on film of, of a phenomenon like this? Or? This that's the first documentation I know of. The the rest of the accounts of this house are, are like uh, just in stories and legend. We decided to go up there and actually see if we could catch something concrete that we could show. Yeah, other people have spent the night in the house, and that was the reading. I don't know if you caught the reading at the beginning. Uh, but but people have spent the night in the house to try to to see what what's going on with this phenomena. Hmm. They, it's really I've never seen this show before. Is that what you guys are doing as you're talking about this kind of phenomenon? Is this the first time you guys have ever been on? Or this is our fifth show. To, to, to be honest with you. Huh. Okay. Yeah, and and uh, uh, once a month we we cover topics that are bizarre, strange, and we try to go out and find some kind of answers for them. And uh, we really really appreciate. Uh, Callers calling in and give us their opinion. We're going to have to wrap it up now, caller, but thanks for your call. Okay, Ross Perot sucks. Thanks. A Ross Perot message there. It's getting close to election time. Anyway, okay. uh, we'd like to thank you all very much for watching tonight's show. Uh, we had some really good calls and then we had some strange calls, but you know, that's the name of the game on live, on live TV here. Uh, we want you to be sure to stay tuned for our next show, which is called The Serpent of Phantom Lake.
Yeah, we have some uh, good film footage that uh, we've, we've captured and we'd like to share it with you. And in case a lot of viewers out there might know where Phantom Lake is, we're not going to tell you right now, but if you know, you'll, you'll get an idea. So we'd like to thank you for watching and uh, from both of us, good night. Yeah. Stay tuned to Channel 29. We'll have a show next month. Thank you. Bye.